Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And this week we are starting my very first ever Nuzlocke run of Pokemon, which I will explain if you've never heard about it before. Um, and uh, Kendra is already having a ton of fun with the new Channel Point Redeem, which is naming um, the Pokemon. So yeah, you guys can do that and, uh, and I will <laughs> use for names as we as we catch uh pokemon during this uh during this nuzlocke <laughs> i missed you guys i have to say um i always take a break from streaming and all that stuff over the christmas holiday it's just it's too difficult to kind of keep up with a streaming schedule and also uh you know things come up during the holidays and and so it's just it just doesn't work but i'm back now so welcome in landon welcome in kendra welcome in koneko um i have been totally torturing kendra in her streams for crusader kings with um silly stupid names so i absolutely deserve everything she's throwing my way <laughs> Um, but you guys can uh, can name some too. So we've got, let's see, what have we got? A bunch of Kendra submitted ones. Yeah, uh, I, I've been naming Kendra's uh, people. We did a body parts one and I suggested, because of Booty, which was an original Karen creation name, and I suggested just the weirdest body parts I could think of that would make Kendra the most uncomfortable. So I suggested uh, feet, uh, eyeball and knee pit. So we did that. So, you know, <laughs> Hey, it's a great name. You know, knee pit is going to live on forever. It, knee pit might be the, the greatest Royal that you have. You just don't know. You don't know, Kendra. You don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, in honor of this, uh, this Pokemon Nuzlocke, uh, we're going to, of course, do a Pokemon themed quiz. Let me put that in the chat for you guys. So we're going to do which starter Pokemon are you? So let's switch over. Here we go. All right. So we're going to start this quiz. Um, this concludes all 22 starter Pokemon. So it's going to not just be the starters from Leaf Green, which is what we're going to be playing. Um, it's going to include all of them. So here we go. All right, how do you spend your ideal Saturday evening? Playing video games, it's a nice way to escape the stress of the day. Singing, I know some lovely soothing tunes that are just lovely for bedtime. Watching a TV show or a movie, I like turning off my brain every once in a while. That actually, that is pretty, probably pretty common for me. Kendra's lurking. <laughs> Kendra, thank you so much for the lurk, but I feel like um, you did that on purpose. You really just came up, came in here to fill up the name queue with craziness, and then um, you said, bye, see you later. <laughs> um, does it include Eevee officially? It's a starter. Yeah, I mean, I assume it does. It says it includes all of them, and Eevee is a starter in Let's Go, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, hanging out with friends at their place. I like to chill out with the people I like most. Used to like to do that, and then, you know, the panini started. Uh, making a little bit of art, it's soothing, and the end results are nice. I do spend my weekends doing stuff like that. Uh, doing some yoga or relaxing exercise. I like stretching out my sore muscles after a long day. Definitely not me. Um, but doing a bit of vigorous exercise. I don't even have to read the rest of that. Sleeping. I don't mind going to bed early. I'm always kind of tired. Oh, that's so true. Okay, that's true. Doing a little bit of housework before bed. I like to keep the place tidy. I do do housework, but that's in the morning, so that's not before bed. Uh, browsing the internet. I like to see what's going on with my friends in the world before I turn in for the night. Um, I would say in the evenings, I'm probably most likely watching something. It says 22, including Pikachu. It should be 23 if it includes Eevee. Oh, well, that answers that question. Maybe this quiz was created before Let's Go released. I don't know. Uh, what's your ideal lunchtime meal? A slice or two of pizza. It's delicious and easy to get a hold of. A bowl of noodles. Pasta is my favorite. I do enjoy pasta. A sandwich. Easy to make and delicious as well. A big salad. Fresh greens are good for you and they taste nice as well. A muffin. Muffins taste nice. And also, I probably forgot to eat breakfast. A big salad. That actually is something I make for lunch a lot where I just get the greens and then put on like whatever else we have in the house. Um, this like leftover stuff. Um, usually, we'll, I'll cut up like small pieces of whatever meat we have left over, vegetables we have left over, etc. And then put some balsamic vinaigrette or Italian dressing all over it is really good. How do you feel if someone is messing with your friends? Absolutely enraged. Do you mess with my friends? You mess with me. I'm scared. What if they get hurt? 
Cold anger. Nobody messes with my friends. Nobody. Uh, indignant. Who do they think they are? Disheartened. I don't understand why we can't all get along. Uh, cold anger. Definitely. When someone's fucking around with my friends and I'm not into that. Um, what is your favorite color, including different shades? Please answer. Choose one. Okay. Well, let's see what's on here. Is pink on here? Oh, pink is not on here. Um, if pink's not on here, we're going to go with purple, I suppose. I'm Tepig. Oh, really? I, I like Tepig. I love the fire starters. So, um, I like Tepig. I like him. Uh, what is your ideal vacation location? A cabin in the mountains. It's peaceful and quiet up there. A hotel with a view of an active volcano. I like the beauty and excitement. I do want to do that someday. I'm biased towards Snivy. Oh, Snivy's pretty cool. Snivy's pretty cool, but I, I really love the fire starters. An oceanfront beach house. The sounds of the sea are relaxing and the view would be wonderful. A lodge in a national forest. The giant trees are so gorgeous and the animals there are so cool. Somewhere in a big city, the tourist attractions and shopping for souvenirs are so much fun. A scenic rural area, somewhere with rolling wide fields of grass or flowers. A tropical island, the warm weather and exotic wildlife would make it fun. Um, I, because I do a lot of cruises, we're going to choose tropical island, but just so that you guys know, a very, very close second is an oceanfront beach house. Um, I do go to the beach pretty regularly. I would love to go on vacation in a national forest. Yeah, I mean, any of these would be good, but definitely the one that speaks to me more is the tropical island. Okay, let's see. We got, I never, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Um, pop, pop, plyo? Pop Leo? I'm not sure. Adorable and awkward, you might have trouble making friends, and that's okay. Not everyone's a social wizard, but what you lack in social skills you make for make up for with your creativity and artistic talents, whether it be music, painting, drawing, or anything in between. Though people may be a little weirded out by you at first, your friends know that you're an empathetic and kind person. Oh, Pop Leo. Oh, Pop Leo. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I don't know if this quite fits me, but it was only five questions. So that's probably why I'm like, I don't know if I vibe with this very much. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I definitely do a lot of creative work, but I wouldn't say that means I have trouble making friends or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, if you, uh, if you do this quiz with me, please, please post your result. I'd like to know. Koneko we know now is a Tepig and I am a Pop Leo. Um, if it's pronounced Pop Leo, then why is there two P's? That makes me think it should be Pop Pleo or something like that, because otherwise the double P doesn't really make sense to me. But anyway, whatever. Languages are weird. <clears throat> okay, guys. So let's talk just a little bit about how a Nuzlocke works. So base the basic rules of a Nuzlocke are that um, when you first go into a route, the first Pokemon that you encounter, you have to try to catch it and um, you can't catch any other Pokemon. It's got to be the first one that you encounter. I'm also going to play with a species clause, which means that um, I'm going to skip the first encounter for catching if I already have that particular Pokemon. Then the other big rule of a Nuzlocke is that if your Pokemon faints, it's dead. And that is how that works. You do not get to revive your Pokemon. Um, so, so yeah, that's the main thing that makes a Nuzlocke actually difficult and challenging. And then of course, we're going to nickname all of our Pokemon. That's the other kind of Nuzlocke rule. Um, I've got a document here that explains how I'm doing my Nuzlocke in particular. Basically that anytime that you want to know, you can find it there. Cause the other thing that I have done is I've gotten, um, a little program that will make it so that we can actually evolve the Pokemon that are impossible to evolve. For example, I, I don't have anyone to trade with, so I'm not going to be do, get to be able to get any of the ones that evolve from trades unless I basically hack it to make that happen. So I have a program that does that and that explains how you can do that too if you want to uh, play Pokemon without having to trade and you can still like evolve, you know, your Abra all the way to Alakazam, etc. If you've played Pokemon, you get the idea which I have. I have played Pokemon for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> a long time. Um, I've been playing ever since the first one came out, and I've played all of them at least once. But the one I've played the most is um, Gen 1, so red, red and blue. Um, but we're going to be doing Leaf Green, which is technically part of Gen 3, but it's a remake of the Gen 1 games. So I'm super familiar with that one. And I just think the remakes for this particular generation are overall better. It adds in natures and 
abilities and several other things that improved over the course of the game. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be playing Leaf Green. So let me unpause this. Moisty, hey, Moisty, of course we will name a Pokemon Moisty. Don't murder me, please. I'll do my best, no promises. All right, so we're gonna unpause, and here we go. <clears throat> I've never done a Nuzlocke before, although even though I've played Leaf Green several, several times. So this is, uh, is very nostalgic for me, but I'm a little bit nervous because this is going to make the game way harder. <laughs> um, how are the levels, by the way? Do, can you hear the audio? Is it too loud compared to me, too quiet compared to me? Um, I can make some adjustments if it's, if it's not right. Visually, it looks right in the thing. It might be a little bit loud, but I'm unsure. So y'all tell me. I'm going to just turn it down just slightly. I wanted to do a Nuzlocke of Diamond once, but then I cried when I immediately lost my Starly, so nope. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel if I lose Pokemon. Um, I am kind of a crybaby. I mean, there's several points in like Final Fantasy X. Y'all saw that I cried. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. All right, let's get going. I think the audio is okay. Game is only a little bit loud now, but I have to listen a bit to decide. Well, I, I think it's a little loud too, so let me just turn that down a little bit. It. There we go. Okay, that's probably a bit better. All right, let's go. Let's get started. So nostalgic, those sounds. Okay, that was a test game that I was doing to make sure everything worked. We're going to start a new game. All right, this is just going to tell you the controls. I already know all the controls. I don't need all that, so we're skipping it. Okay, in the world which you are about to enter, you will embark on a grand adventure with you as the hero. Speak to people and check things wherever you go, be it towns, roads, or caves. Gather information and hints from every source. New paths will open to you by helping people in need, overcoming challenges, and solving mysteries. At times, you will be challenged by others and attacked by wild creatures. Be brave and keep pushing on. Through your adventure, we hope that you will interact with all sorts of people and achieve personal growth. That is our biggest objective. Press the A button and let your adventure begin. What starter are you thinking? Um, all will be revealed. I will show you when I get there, but I do have a starter in mind, Moisty. Hello there, glad to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak. People affectionately refer to me as the Pokemon Professor. This world is inhabited far and wide by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for battling. As for myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. But first, tell me a little about yourself. Tell me, are you a boy or are you a girl? I'm a girl. Let's begin with your name. What is it? All right, my name is... It's Karen. Oh, that's not what I want. There we go. I don't like the look of the all caps names, so I try to like do them like this. <laughs> right, your name is Karen. Yes. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you both were babies. What was his name now? Okay, since Kendra submitted so many beautiful names, I'm gonna actually look through some of those submitted and see if we can go ahead and pick from what we have there. All right, so we have, come on, load. Okay, so we have Moose, Moisty, Uwu, <laughs> Landon, Potato Loaf, Booty, oh, Pikachu for the starter. Uh, Kendra, that's not, <laughs> that's not a name. <laughs> uh, let's refund that. There we go. We can't choose Pikachu as a starter in this one anyways. Um, okay, so I think, I think based on what I, what I have done and what's happened in Kendra's stream, we have to make our rival's name Booty. I think we have to. So that's what we're gonna do. Booty. Okay. It is done. Or was it Booty? Yes, that's right. I remember now. His name is Booty. 
How does he forget his grandson's name every time? <laughs> okay, let's um, mark that as complete. We've used that name. All right, Karen, your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go. Booty transcends. That's right, Kitty. Booty transcends. <laughs> I used to be so mad about the name your character bit when I was little because I had room for seven characters and my name is eight characters long. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, so we gotta boot up the PC first because there is a potion in here and we definitely need that. All right, let's go. We're starting our Pokemon adventure. Kitty, oh, I'll tell you, I guess you weren't here at the beginning. I missed all of you. I missed streaming. It's weird not streaming after a while, you know? Um, right, all girls dream of traveling. It said so on TV. Oh yes, Professor Oak next door was looking for you. All right, let's go find Professor Oak. It feels so weird streaming again after not doing it for so long. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try to go in here. This is Professor Oak's lab, but only Booty is here. What? What, it's only Karen? Gramps isn't around. Okie dokie. Well, I guess we're gonna just try to leave then. Let's leave our nice little town. Hey, wait! Don't go out! It's unsafe. Wild Pokemon live in the tall grass. You need your own Pokemon for your protection. I know. Here, come with me. Does Booty evolve into Bootu? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the, maybe that's his last name. No, it's Oak because he's Oak's grandson, so his name is Booty Oak. <laughs> Gramps, I'm fed up with waiting. Booty? Let me think. Oh, that's right. I told you to come. Just wait. Here, Karen. There are three Pokemon here. Ha-ha! The Pokemon are held inside these Pokeballs. When I was young, I was a very serious Pokemon trainer. But now, in my old age, I have only these three left. You can have one. Go on, choose. Okay. Hey, Gramps, no fair! What about me? Be patient, Booty. You can have one, too. Yeah, but I get to choose first, because he likes me better. Sorry. I see Bulbasaur is your choice. He's very easy to raise. So, Karen, do you want to go with the grass Pokemon Bulbasaur? Yes, I am going to go with that, because for my first Nuzlocke, I want to choose the starter that I know is going to be not as challenging. I typically go with Charmander, but, um, yeah, I'm too, I'm too nervous. <laughs> So I typically play this game with Charmander, but when I typically play this game, I'm not worried about my Pokemon fainting. It's okay. So yes, we're going to go with Bulbasaur. This Pokemon is really quite energetic. Karen received the Bulbasaur from Professor Oak. Do you want to give a nickname? Yes. Okay, let's see what nicknames we have to choose from. We have Potato Loaf, we have Landon, we have Uwu, we have Moisty, and we have Moose. I think for our starter... I think for our starter, we have to go with Landon. We have to name him Landon. I mean, I just, that just feels right, don't you think? You know, like, since she's my co-host, I think we have to name the starter Landon. <laughs> That's right, kitty, exclamation Landon. I can't wait for Kendra to come back and see what shenanigans she has wrought. Okay. There we go. I'll take this one then. Receive the Charmander from Professor Oak. So the actual challenge of the Nuzlocke begins when we first get Pokeballs. So it's not technically begun yet. If a wild Pokemon appears, your Pokemon can battle it. With it at your side, you should be able to reach the next town. What? Wait, Karen, let's check out our Pokemon. Come on, I'll take you on. Okay, Booty. You're on. Um, something that's kind of annoying about Leaf Green versus the original uh, Red and Blue is that Scratch, which is the move that Charmander has, is super strong compared to the tackle that I have. So we'll see if we can win this. Um, oh, for Pete's sake, so pushy as always. Karen, you've never had a Pokemon battle before, have you? I have, but you're going to tell me anyway. A Pokemon battle is when trainers put their Pokemon against each other. The trainer that makes the other trainer's Pokemon faint by lowering their HP to zero wins. But rather than talking about it, you'll learn more from experience. Try battling and see for yourself. I think I could have figured that out without you telling me, but thanks. 
Inflicting damage on the foe is the key to the battle. Whenever I watch someone do a Pokemon challenge, I'm reminded of Game Champs. Can you beat Pokemon without getting hit video? Still in awe that she did that. Oh, you'd have to like one hit kill everything. And I don't think you could do it for this first rival fight. Yes, I know. Lowering the foe's stats is a good idea. I'm going to do a little bit of that. <clears throat> Just so his scratch isn't so devastating. Because remember, I have that potion from the PC. So I can heal up. I think he is just going to scratch a lot. In the original red and blue, um, oh sweet, a crit. In the original red and blue, he would do more than scratch. He would actually use like, um, I think he has, I think he has growl as well. Um, but in, in this, he, he won't. He'll just keep scratching, which is what he should do. Like that's the better strat strategy, but it means that this battle can actually be challenging if you choose Bulbasaur. You can with insane luck. Well, do you have to, like, time the RNG so that you get, like, a starter with the exact right stats? Is that, like, how you would do that? That's all. That's the only way I can imagine it. Like, you have to game it so that you do the exact right stats for your starter versus your rival's starter. Land and gain 96 experience, or 69 experience points. Nice. Woo! Level up! <clears throat> a defeated booty! Only in Gen 1, though, you have to let the AI tail whip seven times in a row. Oh, that's how you do it. So you have to get lucky with the moves that he uses. Yeah, they will not tail whip seven times in a row in this version. I'll link the video in Discord. It's fun. Okay, yeah, I would like to watch that. But I guess, yeah, you could do it in Gen 1, because they will. The rival will do that sometimes. Okay, I'll make my Pokemon battle to toughen it up. Karen, Gramps, smell you later. Bye, booty. Professor Oak may not look like much, but he's the authority on Pokemon. Many Pokemon trainers hold him in high regard. I study Pokemon as Professor Oak's aide. I study Pokemon as Professor Oak's aide. You see the same, say the same thing. I was taking your quiz. I'm Charmander. Oh, I got um, Pop Leo as one of the water starters in one of the later gens. I love Charmander. He's like my OG starter that I would choose all the time, you know? Technology is incredible. You can now store and recall items and Pokemon data via PC. Okay, so something's not right because it's supposed to show you guys all of my Pokemon. Let me see something. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now you guys can see. So you'll be able to see my team at the top all the time there. My OG starter was Turtwig, but my go-to starter in Diamond is Piplup. I never finished the Turtwig playthrough. Piplup's good. I um, I really do like Piplup. That's who I choose for that particular generation as well. I copied what it said on one of those trainer tip signs. Trainer tips. Press start to open the menu. Okay, thanks. I know that. So, I don't have Pokeballs yet. So, if I get an encounter here, it's okay for me to just fight it and kill the Pokemon. It's It doesn't count against me. Hi, I work at Pokemon Mart. It's part of a convenience chain selling all sorts of items. Please visit us in Viridian City. I know, I'll give you a sample. Here you go. There's another potion. I definitely want to get all the potions and things like that that I can. Mudkip gang, rise up. Oh yeah, Mudkip's a good starter as well. I'm trying to think of another playthrough where I actually chose the grass starter. I pretty much always choose fire, and then grass is is like not one I choose, and there's a couple gens where I really like the water starter. But I can't think, I, this might actually be my first playthrough where I've chosen a grass starter. I typically don't. I typically choose the water and sometimes, or typically choose the fire and sometimes the water. See those ledges along the road? It's a bit scary, but you can jump from them. You can get back to Pallet Town quicker that way. Not me wondering for a second where my passage to the lake is. <laughs> yeah, this is not Gen 4. This is Gen... Well, it's... The Gen 1 remake is technically Gen 3. But Gen 1. 
really. Just because I just think this game has so much better features and things like that, like I wouldn't... I just think it's better for streaming than streaming the Gen 1. Also, the graphics are just, oh, just more beautiful. Gen 1, unfortunately, is uh, not very pretty. <laughs> I do love it, though. I love it for nostalgia value, but it's not very pretty. Oh yeah, level up. This is infinitely better than actual Gen 1, Gen 1, to be honest. Just the Pokemon sprites are an improvement. Absolutely. Yeah, the sprites in Gen 1 are very unfortunate. Uh, we had to use our imagination as children. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my gosh. Usually don't get so many encounters running up here. Original unpopular opinion, Gen 1 kind of sucks compared to the original Gen 2 and Gen 3. Um... I definitely disagree. There are certain things that Gen 1 does, particularly for this game, there are certain things that are actually screwed up by some of the changes. For example, Levitate wasn't a thing before, um, which makes the ghost ghastly, like the only really ghost Pokemon, behave completely differently than um, he behaved in original Gen 1, and some things like that that really do mess up the balance of the game. But um, in general, I would say that I like this one better, but I just don't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily like that Gen 1 sucks. It doesn't. It's amazing for what it did at the time. It's just that it was their first, it was their first run and the game just wasn't that complex at that time. I keep pressing B like I have the running shoes, but I totally don't. Hey, are you from Pallet Town? You know Prof Oak, right? His order came in. Can I get you to take it to him? Yeah, Karen received Oak's parcel. Okay, let's go take that back to him. So we're literally, the first part of this game is just a fetch quest for our neighbor. <laughs> G1 was great at the time, but I'm just sick and tired of people saying it's the best gen. It's not. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I think a lot of people have nostalgia glasses for it. For sure. Um, I would not say it's the best gen. I just think that it, it does a lot of things that are incredibly impressive. Um, that I, they just they just didn't really kind of keep going on later. As far as like w what Pokemon you can find in what areas and things of that nature I think are, were very clearly carefully planned out in gen 1 in a way that doesn't happen in the later gens. And it makes it provide like this really interesting challenge for for a kid, you know, that doesn't necessarily have the um, ability to understand the complexities of other role-playing games. But a, a kid can definitely feel challenged and still um, overcome the challenges present in Pokemon in the first gen. But yeah, I think a lot of people saying that aren't saying it in the way that I am. They're saying it like with the nostalgia glasses, you know. <laughs> I'm mostly just salty, getting all the starters, getting all the attention. <laughs> well, if you would play Gen 1 first, I, you would probably feel similar, you know? I think most people, their favorite Gen is the first one that they play. So I'm talking to my mom so I can get a little healed up. There's no Pokemon Center in Pallet Town, but you can go talk to your mom and get the heals. Oh, Karen, how is my old Pokemon? Well, it seems to be growing more attached to you. You must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. What's that? You have something for me? Yeah, Oak's parcel. Ah, oh, it's the custom Pokeball. I had it on order. Thank you. Uh-oh, here come Booty. I almost forgot. What did you call me for? <sighs> so useless. I ran your grandpa's errand. You should have done that. He's your grandpa. All right, I have a request for you two. On the desk, here's my invention, the Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Karen and Booty, take these with you. Yeah, I got the Pokedex. I was a very late Pokemon bloomer. My first one was Omega Ruby on the 3DS. Oh, wow, you did start late, Moisty. That is very late for your age. Um, you can get detailed data on Pokemon just by seeing them. You must catch them to obtain complete data. So here are some tools for catching wild Pokemon. Yeah, now we have Pokeballs. Okay, so now the challenge begins. If a Pokemon faints after this, 
it's dead, okay? And I gotta go catch one Pokemon per route, the first one that I meet. When a wild Pokemon appears, it's fair game. Just throw a Pokeball at it and try to catch it. This won't always work, however. A healthy Pokemon can escape. You have to be lucky. To make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world, that would be my dream. But I'm too old. I can't get the job done. So I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Get moving, you two. This is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. All right, Gramps, leave it to me. Karen, I hate to say it, but you won't be necessary for this. I know. I'll borrow a town map from my sis. I'll tell her not to lend you one, Karen. Ha 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 ha. Don't bother coming around to my place after this. Oh, booty. Why do you assume your sister hates me the way you do? My first gen was gen 4, but I actually prefer gen 5. Black and white did something Diamond Pearl didn't quite get to. Black. The cats are destroying things in the closet. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I love Gen 5. I remember when it came out, people were so mad because it didn't have any of the original Pokemon. It had, like, all new ones. Um, but I thought that was super refreshing. I was really excited. Grandpa asked you to run an errand. Gee, that's lazy of him. Here, this will help you. Karen received a town map from Daisy. Karen put the town map in the key item's pocket. All right, so we got a map now. All right. So now, the first encounter that we have on this route, I have to try to catch that Pokemon. And if I don't catch it, I don't get a Pokemon for this route. All right, let's see what we get. A Pidgey, okay. So we're gonna try to catch a Pidgey. Now, for these really low level Pokemon like this, you don't have to fight them. You can just throw Pokeballs and you will probably get it. Oh no, no lady. Do not stand up there. That's how you turn off my computer that one stream. Okay. <clears throat> I guess the first Pokeball didn't catch it. Oh gosh. This is not going well. Mm, maybe I will risk a tackle. No, let's actually, let's do a Leech Seed because that'll barely take off any health. And I'll definitely catch it by then. My favorite thing about Gen 5 is actually the lack of Gen 1 Pokemon. Actually, it's the story and N being best boy, but also the Pokemon. N was so popular when that game came out. Like, so freaking popular. Okay, we'll just whittle him down. I, I just feel like because I got all the way to level 7, I'm like, I don't know how much damage the tackle is going to take off. So I'm just going to leech seed it down a little bit, and then we'll try to throw another Pokeball. N is still the best Pokemon rival. Agree. He's a fantastic rival. Okay, we're gonna try to throw another Pokeball. Come on, I don't wanna waste them. There we go. All right. Also Getsis, I love Getsis as a villain. Oh man, I totally feel you. This is making me want to play other Pokemon games, too. <laughs> I'm gonna go through and play all of them. Alright, so we got a Pidgey. Give a nickname to the captured Pidgey. Yes! Okay, let's see what names we have. So we've chosen two of the um, Kendra names so far. So... Oh, I need a mark off Landon. So I think we're gonna go with um, one of the other names from you guys. So this is gonna be Moisty. See, did I spell that right? M O I S T Y. Okay, I'm a crappy speller, so I just have to make sure. There we go. Moisty. All right. Also, get sis. Um, Hydreon has frustration, a move that does more damage the lower the Pokemon's friendship level is. It does max damage. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a nice little um, Easter egg, like, fun fact for Pokemon. They look like a Moisty. I think so. I mean, I think probably this is the kind of bird that loves his bird bath. You know what I'm saying? Alright, we're just gonna... Oh. He did not do a lot of damage. I probably could have tackled that Pidgey. But I didn't. Wild Rattata was seated. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> Woo, that's not good. I think I can kill it next. Because I'm faster than this Rattata for some reason, even though Rattata is normally really fast. Crit happens. <laughs> that's true. And I think that's like the killer of this game is um is critical hits. So, and uh, even though I've played a lot of Pokemon, I do not have the kind of knowledge that a lot of people have about Pokemon, where they like know, you know, how much about how much a crit is gonna do and and things like that. Like I don't I don't really have that knowledge. So um, we'll see how this goes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. We hope to see you again. Now, because this is a role play game, I like to talk to everybody because I want to see the lore of the area. So, um, so we're going to do that. Pokemon centers heal your tired, hurt, or fainted Pokemon. They make all Pokemon completely healthy. Now, a lot of these people that you talk to in the beginning of the game will like give you hints and things about the game, and that kind of slows down later. But so that's what a lot of them are going to say right now. Um, there's a Pokemon center in every town ahead. They charge no money, so don't be shy about healing Pokemon. Man, I wish real life was like that. Crying in American. Please feel free to use that PC in the corner. The receptionist told me so. It's so kind of her. I once saw someone on Tumblr say and always uses Pokemon from the nearby area because he's doing a Nuzlocke. <laughs> Blair keeps killing the main on his team. Oh my god, that's a great headcanon. Um, you want to know about the two kinds of Caterpillar Pokemon? Yes. Caterbee has no poison, but Weasel Weedle does. Watch that your Pokemon aren't, be aren't stabbed by Weedle's poison sting. Ooh, okay. Now we can actually go into the mart and buy things, unlike before. I've got to buy some potions. You never know when your Pokemon will need quick healing. This shop does good business in antidotes, I've heard. Yes, that's your hint hint, buy some antidotes, which I'm definitely going to do. Yes, I would like to buy some Pokeballs. I have two, so I want to get three of those. Yes. Okay, and I definitely want to get a couple antidotes. Yes. And let's get some potions. You're welcome. Nope. So this is a little school. Phew, I'm trying to memorize all my notes. Okay, be sure to read what's on the blackboard carefully. So here's what this will teach you. Um, it lists all these Pokemon statuses and what they do. So you can see that sleep, a Pokemon can't attack if it's asleep. It will stay asleep even after a battle. Use awakening to awaken it from sleep. Poison, um, Pokemon's health steadily drops. Poison lingers after battle. Use an antidote to cure poison. So poison's another big trial of Nuzlocke's because you'll keep getting poisoned after the battle. So you, your Pokemon can die outside of battle. Uh, paralysis reduces speed and may prevent the Pokemon from moving. Paralysis also remains after battles. Use Paralyze Heal for treatment. Uh, burns reduce attack power and also cause ongoing HP loss. A burn remains after battle. Use Burn Heal. But I don't think I don't think it continues the HP loss after battle, but I don't remember. A frozen Pokemon becomes helplessly immobile. It stays frozen after the battle ends. Use Ice Heal. And that's it. I'm so glad Poison wears off at 1 HP out of battle in later generations. I know, right? Um, it's so cheap that it doesn't do that here and your Pokemon can like totally die. Uh, there's Pokeballs at your waist. You have Pokemon, don't you? It's great that you can carry and use Pokemon anytime, anywhere. All right, we're gonna go up here and around this corner. Because there's an item. Yeah, I got another potion. So if you try to go past this area before going back and delivering Oak's parcel, you're gonna get stopped by this man who's laying in the middle of the road because he hasn't had his coffee. And like, same, I also am annoying and get in the way when I have not had my coffee. I go shopping in Pewter City occasionally. I have to take the winding trail in Viridian Forest when I go. Well, now I've had my coffee and that's what I need to get going. Hmm, what is that red box you have? So you're working on your Pokedex. Let me give you a word of advice. Whenever you catch a Pokemon, the Pokedex automatically updates its data. 
You don't know how to catch a Pokemon? I suppose I had better show you then. So it does this tutorial that you can't skip about how to catch Pokemon, but y'all literally just saw me catch a Pokemon, so we don't need this. So we're just gonna, you know, watch this tutorial that we can't skip. <laughs> first time one of my Pokemon got poisoned in Diamond, I thought my DS was broken and I was terrified. Oh! Oh, because it's like, makes that ant eh, ant eh, noise. <laughs> in the Japanese G1, the man who needs his coffee is actually hungover and that's why he's asleep in this tree. <laughs> so then someone gives him a hangover cure and he's okay? <laughs> is that what happens? <laughs> Instead of just, I had my coffee? Was that not educational? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, and then you get the TTTV, which will do various tutorials. Um, if you need them. Let's see what's in this house. My daddy loves Pokemon too. Coming up with nicknames is fun, but it's not so easy to do. Clever names are nice, but simple names are easier to remember. Well, I have an, the easiest way to get, excuse me, names. It's called Channel Point Redeems. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing over there. Yeah, he gets better once he wakes up. Oh, so he's like just asleep hungover? Oh, that's too funny. This Pokemon gym is always closed. I wonder who the leader is. Dun dun dun, foreshadowing. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna catch a Pokemon on Route 2. So we already have a Pidgey, so we could potentially get, or we'll probably get a Rattata from here. But we might also get a Caterpie or a Weedle. There's a low percentage chance that we'll get one of those, but it's probably going to be a Rattata. So let's see. It's a Rattata. Okay. Go, Landon. All right, let's leech seed it. The wild Rattata was seeded. And then I guess I'll probably tackle it, because it shouldn't kill it, based on what I saw from when I attacked the Rattata on the Route 1. It did barely any damage. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Whoa! Nice crit there, Rattata! Alright, let's catch you. <coughs> Yeah! Rattata was caught. Give a nickname. Yes, I would like to give a nickname. Okay, let's see what we have. We can do Moose, Uwu, or Potato Loaf. <laughs> um, let's go with... Uh, let's go with... Let's go with Moose. Let's go with Moose for him. It's alphabetical and I always expect it to be like QWERTY and so I always get confused when they do alphabetical little keyboards in these games. Okay, is that how you spell Moose? Did I do that right? M-O-O-S-E, yes, okay. Moose Mouse, that's right, exactly. Okay, so the reason that we did that is because we're using the Species Clause. I wanted to go just kind of eliminate another possibility from there because in the next little spot, I really, really want to catch a Mankey. So let's heal everybody up. It would be hilarious if we got a Stantler and named it Moose. Oh, a Stantler named him Mouse. There's no Stantlers in this game, but that would be awesome. Is there? I don't, I'm trying to think if there's anything that's Moose-like in this game. I guess the closest one would be like Ponyta as a horse. I think that's the closest Moose-like one that is in this game. Okay, so I'm not going to go past this grass because if I go past this grass, it's going to trigger a fight with my rival, which I don't want to do right now. 
I'm just trying to catch a Pokemon. And there we go, there's our Mankey. All right, let's go, Landon. Stupid scratch. It doesn't do much, that's good. Okay, let's catch him. Pony Tawny's to have a name from My Little Pony. Ah, broke free! Bitch! You are mine! I can't believe you broke three when you're in free when you're in the yellow. That's wrong. That should be illegal for a level four Pokemon to do. Woo! Okay. We're gonna call Mankey Potato Loaf. Give a nickname to the captured Mankey. Yes. I was I don't know if it'll fit, but we're gonna we're gonna fit as much of this as we can. Potato. Oop, that's wrong. No. Loaf. It exactly fits. Kendra must have known. She must have known, like, oh, this is how many letters I have. <laughs> okay, potato loaf. Potato loaf the manky. We are going to use exactly the number of nicknames that you guys submitted today, because there's one more nickname in there, um, and we're going to have one more Pokemon we're going to catch. So any nicknames that are submitted after the one that's in there right now, those will be used next stream. We've got one more we're going to get. Yes, please heal my Pokemans. So I'm going to try to avoid as much as possible doing too much grinding on stream because I think that is um, really boring to watch <laughs> for me to just grind. But in this very beginning part of the game, I do want to grind just a little bit. So we're going to get um, these guys. Uh, Landon's already level eight, so she doesn't need any grinding. Well, he doesn't need any grinding. Um, but uh, we are going to... Do get them up to level five for the other ones that we have before we kind of move on. So um, while, while we're doing that grinding, I would love to know from everybody, how was your holiday? What did you guys do for Christmas? Um, anything fun, exciting? Did you get to see people or, or not? Um, I feel like here pretty much everyone went to see family but um, some people came back from seeing family with COVID, which is not ideal. So, um, you know, kind of like bittersweet situation around here. I didn't get it, I don't, I, nobody in my family did, but um, some of my friends did that saw their family. Um, really, really frustrating situation, you know. All right. And I'm scared of losing my Pokemon, so we're going to be super annoying <laughs> and go back and heal constantly. And um, and this is why I think, hopefully, this is the only episode that will do much grinding on stream and most of it I'll do off stream so that you guys don't have to watch me walk back and forth to the Pokemon Center. <laughs> if I fight things that, like, you know, actually take off a decent amount of health. And that'll also give me a chance to, like, make sure I'm continually leveling up my box Pokemon at least somewhat so they don't fall too far behind. Um, so, you know. We went and had Thai tea for Christmas, we being parents, brother, girlfriend, and I. I went shopping with my partner earlier. Oh, that sounds so fun. And on vacation for the week of New Year's. Oh, oh, Koneko, where'd you go? I knew you were doing that high tea thing. I remember that from last time, but um, yeah, where'd you go for vacation? We didn't do any of that. We stayed home, you know. Hmm, I think I'm gonna switch train. I feel like Moisty is a little bit weak. So let's switch train him so he can get a level. That tackle hit for a lot. This is a strong Pidgey or something. Because Land is not doing much damage. We had to put off Christmas until New Year's because one of my kiddos got COVID. Oh no, kitty. I feel like 
everyone, everyone knows somebody that got COVID right after Christmas or right around Christmas. It's crazy. Just a different part of the Netherlands. Oh, but we wanted to be in a fireworks free area because I hate fireworks. I totally understand Koneko, that makes sense. I feel like I know way more people with COVID right now than any other time. Exactly, Kitty, that's how I feel too. Like no other time during this has it been like so many people that like I directly know and interact with, you know what I mean? Um, it's really weird. This, this particular variant is, it must just be like just that incredibly transmissible. Um, you know, I mean, I know that all the news reports said that, but I don't know, man. It's like the, just what I know of people I know, it's, it's different. This one's different. Now, nobody I know has got it really bad. Like no horror stories or anything. Just like a lot of people got it, you know, or were exposed and, you know, might have it, but don't know and just chose to quarantine without testing or, you know, various stories like that. Crazy. It's crazy. Bye, Riri. Alright, this is a level up. Good old Moisty. I didn't even look at the gender of the Pokemon when I was choosing the names. So, um, Moisty, you're a girl. I hope that's cool with you. I mean, Landon's a boy, but, you know, I know she'll be fine with that. Oh, speaking of, I've got an appointment for a booster shot. Oh, that's so good, Koneko. Third jab about halfway through January. That is awesome. Yeah, I got I got boosted. I'm very, very happy that I did. Considering, as far as I understand it, every little bit that you do with, like, vaccinations and boosters and everything um, makes you m more likely to have, like, the very, very mild symptoms. Go, let's heal up. All right, I'm gonna rearrange just a little bit because I don't want. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Maybe it doesn't matter because they don't. The Pidgeys don't have any flying moves right now. I was saying I really don't want Mankey to fight any Pidgeys, but at this low level, they only have tackle. So I guess it probably actually doesn't really matter. <clears throat> All right, let's scratch on potato loaf. Oh, you were just thirsty, Vivi. You were thirsty. Good job, potato loaf. You're not so much of a loaf, are you? The other thing that I did over Christmas break is I watched the second season of Witcher. I have to tell you guys, the second season of Witcher was so much better than the first season. Oh my god. I was, um, I, I liked the first season, but that timeline stuff, I was like so not about it. <gasps> no! He critted me! I lost one already! Bye, potato loaf. Bye, potato loaf. You will be missed. Moose will avenge you. Man, I can't believe I lost one so early. Yeah, crit happened. Crit definitely happened. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do whenever we have one die. We're gonna put it in the death box. Yeah, so we'll put him in, let's see, we're gonna name this,
And we're gonna make it the volcano. I can't believe that happened so early on, guys. <sighs> oh, no, I wanted to close out. No, I done. Bye. Okay, we're gonna log off. <sighs> I've never done a Nuzlocke before, so, you know. <laughs> uh, I just can't believe I lost one so quickly. Yeah, no, that's why I made it the second box. Um, so they shouldn't go there. God. Alright, well, let's try to get Moisty another level. Can't believe we killed one already. I just really didn't think, like, I was like, oh, you know, it's fine, he still has plenty of health, but he didn't. He totally didn't. In G4, the mons go to a box you had left open. I don't know how it works here. Oh, well, we'll find out eventually once we uh, once we do that. But if it's just the last one that you use, then that should still be fine. Mm, I'm faster than it. Yeah, let's do it. Kill it. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. What if I lose another one? It's okay, at least we didn't kill Moisty. Oh, sand attack, that's great. Sand attack's really annoying. Alright, let's get Moose a level. I'll try not to, I'll try not to jinx it, Koneko. <laughs> I just can't believe it, I can't believe I lost one already. I mean, they're such, they're, they're have so, such low HP at this point, you know. I guess it kind of makes sense. Oh no, don't miss! Oh, that did not do a lot of damage. Oh, but Pidgey missed too. Okay. I'm gonna switch him out because I just feel like- I feel like that was a lot of damage. This Pidgey seems strong. Got him. If we catch a Jinx at any point, I'm gonna laugh literally jinxing ourselves. Um, I don't know if you can catch Jinx- ooh, this is level 5? We are gonna switch train. Um, I don't know if you can catch Jinx in this game. I think you have to get Jinx via one of the in-game trades, but I can't remember which one it is or how exactly that works. Oh, you would sand attack me. Little bitch. Oh, don't sand attack again. We might end up having to run from this battle. Evaded? This is not right. Oh my god. We're gonna have to run. Because of the stupid sand attack. Alright. Let's go heal. We just need like a couple more battles. If that level 5 hadn't popped up, I could have probably fought whatever it was with the moose and then leveled up. Yes, please heal my Pokemons. Only three. Only three. Already one dead soldier. And Mankey's really good too, so I'm sad because we could have really used him as like a backup Pokemon for the first gym because he's good against. Um, because he's a fighting type, so he would be good for Brock. You must trade away Poliwhirl and Cerulean to get Jinx, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So yeah, we will not be getting a Jinx this run. Because I don't think I'm going to do the in-game trades. I typically don't, So and I just don't see that. I don't see that happening, because I'd have to actually kind of plan for it at least somewhat. And so I just, you know, I don't see that. Good miss, good miss. Okay. Yeah, level five. Do 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 do. Okay. All 
All right, so at this point in the game, you can go a little bit farther down that Route 22 and do a rival fight. Um, I do want to do that, but I think we're going to go through Viridian Forest first just to get everybody some more levels, and then maybe we'll come back and do the rival fight. Let's see what I what I got in my bag. I'll make sure I have... Oh, I only have two Pokeballs. Antidotes and potions, okay. Let's go buy some more Pokeballs. So we're going to need to catch a Pokemon in Viridian Forest. Yes. Okay, and that's basically all my money. <laughs> so there we go. Alright. Um, also in Viridian Forest, this is where we see our first hidden items. So I, I think I know where all of the hidden items are in this game. So I'm going to try to show all of those. So you can see where to get all of those hidden items. Alright, so in Viridian Forest, the Pokemon we could potentially get is Caterpie or Weedle. Um, Pikachu is also here, but I don't think it shows up in the first patches of grass. I think Pikachu only shows up in the later patches of grass, which means that um, there's no way. Like, we're not going to get all the way there without having an encounter. Rattata may be small, but don't underestimate its wicked bite. Have you caught one already? Yes, I have. I love I love using Rattatas in the early game. Are you going to Viridian Forest? It's a natural maze in there. Be careful, and you don't get lost. Don't worry, I won't get lost. I know Viridian Forest like the back of my hand. All right, so we can talk to this guy. I came here with some friends to catch us some bug Pokemon. They're all itching to get into some Pokemon battles. All right, at this tree, there's a hidden antidote that you can't see, so you can get that which is good, we need more antidotes. Um, and let me do this, actually. Let me look. Okay, so Bulbasaur has a timid nature, and it has overgrow, ups grass moves in a pinch. And it's poison type, so it's not likely to get poisoned, which is really good for this area. But let's put, let's put Moisty first, because he's a bird, and so he will well, he doesn't have a bird. He doesn't have a flying move yet. Well, we'll just do it like this. It's okay. He's gonna get a flying move soon, I think. He'll get Gust. Alright, so here's another Pokeball. I once accidentally spelled antidote with antidote, and it just about sums up my opinion on Twitter. Okay, Weedle! Alright, so I wish it would have been a Caterpie, because I really like Butterfree. Um, Beedrill is not all that, but, uh, you know, we're gonna go with it. It's fine. Oh, not potion. I want to use a Pokeball. I was not paying attention. I saw the P and assumed. <clears throat> Dang it. Good thing we have plenty of antidotes, because he keeps using Poison Sting. And this Weedle's going to be named Ulu. So it'll be Ulu, the bee. <laughs> yeah, I did have a, a glitch where there was a type called bird. Yep. You are absolutely right. But I mean, flying basically is bird, because you, you, like, is there even a single, like, pure flying type in the game? I don't feel like there is. Almost every single flying type is actually, um, flying is, like, also normal dual type. And, um, so, yeah. So, let's do this. Let's do the uwu all lowercase. Uwu. Uwu? So, you know, I know it's technically called flying type, but it's basically bird type. Like, you know, <laughs> it's bird type. Like, that's what they are. All right. So we've got Ewu. He'll need to be leveled up some, too. All right. Down in the this corner over here, there is a um, another item. 
to Bulbapedia I go. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, you can answer the questions while I play. I was throwing Pokeballs to catch Pokemon, and I ran out. That's why you can never have too many balls. That's right, kid. You can never have too many balls. There's a Caterpie. I wish I would have caught you, Caterpie. But it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Caterpie is a cutie. I like Caterpie. Tornadus, Rookity, and Corvusquire are the only pure flying type Pokemon. Everything else is dual type. And Corvusquire just came out in the latest one, so, you know. Not a lot of dual type with flying. Or not a lot of single type with flying. Which is a shame. I feel like that's like kind of a waste, you know. That should exist. If they're gonna have a type, there should be more Pokemon with, like, utilizing that type, you know, without the normal. Or by itself. What was that? Oh, it was, it was a potion. Does type null become dual type with K RKS system? I don't know. That's a good question. I really don't know. I've, I've never really, like, looked into that uh, type null into that Pokemon. Um, to know exactly how it works, so I don't know. We're going back to heal up, by the way, because we're about to fight trainers and stuff. Okay. There's only four dual-type Pokémon who have flying listed as their first type. Oh, what are they, Koneko? I, f I just feel like flying type is, like, the odd man out. And it's so sad. Like, why does that type get not get the love? It should. Noibat, Noivern, Corviknight, and... Camerant are the only primary flying type. The rest is secondary flying type. Hmm. Yeah, and those are all later Pokemon. So it's almost like they were like, we should finally do something about this. <clears throat> hey, you have Pokemon. Come on, let's battle them. Let's see what you got, bug catcher Rick. A Weedle. All right, I'm gonna use Landon against the Weedles. <clears throat> and that's really because like, Bulbasaur can't really get poisoned. I don't know why you keep using the speed fell move whenever I'm slower than you already, but you do you, Weedle. You do you. So yeah, against the Weedles, I'm probably going to use Bulbasaur. Against the Caterpies, I'm probably going to use my Pidgey. And then against the Kakunas and Metapods, since they can only harden. Oh, I missed what he said. Uh, I think he has another... I think he has a Caterpie. Anyway, that's fine. We'll switch to Moisty. Um, they can only do harden, so we can use Rattata against them. Okay, yeah, it is a Caterpie. Thought I remembered that right. Totally was talking and not reading. <laughs> Why? You are already faster than me. So, like, the AI in this is much smarter than the original, like, Gen 1 AI, but it still does certain things that are, like, really silly. <laughs> like, why, when you're already... You're already faster than me. Stop using string shot. It's dumb. I guess I can't complain because it helps me win when they're dumb. Yay. No, Caterpie can't hack it. That's right, Caterpie can't hack it. So 
there's another item right here. Yeah, the Gen 1 AI is ridiculous. That's an antidote, okay. And let's go fight. Let's see, who's in front? Moisty's in front. Let's put Moose in front. Yeah, the Gen 1 AI is ridiculous. Yo, you can't jam out if you're a Pokemon trainer. Why? I think I can jam out as a Pokemon trainer. Bugcatcher, Doug! Oh, another thing I think I'm gonna do for Nuzlocke is just to kind of make it more challenging and entertaining. Um, I, my plan is not to over level, so when I do some of my like leveling up, like grinding off screen, um, then I think what I'm going to do is make sh to kind of like keep them at the same, keep level them up to whatever the highest level of like the next gym leader is or something like that, like. And try not to go too over that and i'm not gonna like hold myself to it exactly like if i do level up a little bit too much i don't think that's a big deal but i'm not gonna like on purpose way over level the pokemon because then i think that's like where's the challenge then i don't then i wouldn't even have to worry about like typings or statuses or anything if they're like that high level although i'm sure that is a great strategy to win uh no we're gonna keep landon out the remake specifically had a separate AI check to make sure certain soft lock can't happen. Does that mean like where you get in a in a loop where, that you can't get out of? Mm, I don't like how low my HP is right there. I'm not sure what soft lock is. I mean, I think I know what it is, but I'm not familiar with that term. You'll see Lady being super cute in the background back there, grooming herself. So cute! Kakuna, yes, because Kakuna can only harden, so pretty much anything could kill it if you're patient enough. Um,. So we're gonna use Moose. Yeah, soft lock is an infinite loop. Okay, okay, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, um, Gen 1's AI is ridiculous, so you can totally get into weird situations like that in the first gen. But anyway, but I mean, that's just another reason that I feel like for streaming purposes, doing fire red or leaf green is a better choice than doing like red or blue or yellow um it's just you know because you can't you just have you have better ai you have better so many things that make the game more entertaining yeah level up for moose good job I think there's another trainer up here. Yes, there is. I might be little, but I won't like it if you go easy on me. Don't worry, I'm just gonna try to destroy you. Excuse me. Caterpie. Go, mm -mm. oh, Moisty. Oh, this poor Caterpie is so weak. That's all your tackle does, my friend? Oh, no. You got screwed on the stats there.
All right, what's next? <clears throat> Another Caterpie. No, we're gonna keep Moisty out. I can't remember what level... Wow, that's a bad crit. Um, I can't remember what level um, they finally... Pidgey finally gets Gust. But I want to say it's pretty early on. Oh, not bad. Okay. There is one possible on Lorelei in the base in G1. Her dugong has rest. Putting a fighting type against it will make it use rest over and over because it's super effective. <gasps> oh my god, you're right. And since opponents don't have PP in Gen 1, you can't deal enough damage while it's asleep and it'll keep healing forever. The remake specifically check to see... Yep. Mm-hmm. Pika Spray made a video about it. Oh my god. That's all true. I mean, you're totally right. Gen 1, like, those games have been around so much and for so long, and people have played them to death. I feel like people have found, like, everything there is to know about Gen 1. Like, every bug, every weird thing, every, you know, every strange occurrence. Like, people know everything. Everything about Gen 1. Oh no, I don't think it's here yet. There's a hidden item, or maybe it's not hidden, but it's not there. It's after the next turnaround. Go, Moose. I think you can probably take it. Let's take it. I would say that, but Gen 1 being Gen 1, it just keeps on delivering. <laughs> well, I mean, people that... Those games, like... Yes, Pokemon has come a long way since then, but those original games for what they did at the time, yes, got quick attack. Um, they're masterpieces, they really are. So I really just think that like, they have this kind of timeless sense about them that um, that's just because of what they accomplished for the time. That's really amazing. So people will keep playing them forever. You know, so long as this type of game is interesting to people, I think they'll keep playing them. Love me some quick attack. These poor wild metapods and kakunas also only know Harden, so anything can just kill them if you're patient enough. Quick attack, aka zoomies. It's true! Moose got the zoomies. Oh, here's another. Did you know that Pokemon evolve? Yes, I did know that. I haven't evolved one yet, but. Well, you know Pokemon Evolve. It's so weird, like, that when the trainers have the Metapods and Kakunas, they should know more than Harden if they train them up from a Caterpie or a Weedle, but they don't. Um, I find that really strange. Like, this Metapod should be able to tackle, in my mind, because um, when I level up my, my Weedle to a Kakuna, he's going to be able to tackle, but they cannot. It's just one of those, like, weird, strange things. Oh my god. <gasps> Look at how little damage it does from all of his stupid hardens. Uh. Come on now. Crit, crit, moose, crit. Nope. <laughs> One more. They just caught the metapod in the wild. Wild metapods are just dumb. Right, but this was the one that tells you about evolution, so I just feel like his metapod should know tackle. Um, it would just be, it would make sense, you know, if his Metapod knew Tackle. Yes, for Caterpie, let's get Moisty in here. Again, String Shot when he's faster than me. Very silly. 
That's why he's training a pat Caterpie. He wants a not useless Metapod. Oh, there you go, Koneko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So he's training up that Caterpie to evolve into the Metapod. And um, then he's going to have one that's not so dang useless. There we go, Gust. I knew he was getting it soon. Yes, we'll switch back to Moose. You know what blows my mind about Pokemon? People have been playing it for so long and so dedicated that they have like so much of this stuff like memorized, like what all of the different natures do, what all of the different um, abilities do and everything. And, uh, and even though I've been playing these games since they released and I've played all of them at least once, I still am just like, I don't know how I could fit that much information in my head, you know? I feel like I have a lot of Pokemon knowledge, but still when I watch these like professional Pokemon players, um, on Twitch and things like that, it still blows me away, like, the amount of knowledge they have about these games. Just, like, in awe. Oh, gosh. And I've used a lot of quick attacks, so I'll just switch over to tackle for a little bit. That's all he can do is harden anyway. My friend, you need to switch train your Metapods so you can get them up to Butterfree. Butterfree's actually awesome. Yes, you lost. <clears throat> Pokemon type advantages have forever screwed me over. Whenever I play another game, I try to apply Pokemon logic even if it's wrong. <gasps> you wanna know a fun fact? I do the same thing. <laughs> Um, let's actually run from this because I just, it's going to take me a while to kill it, so I don't want to be boring. Um, for example, in Kingdom Hearts 2, water is considered a subcategory of ice and thus is weak to fire. Screws me over every time. Everyone always, like, every game does differently as far as, like, what they do with water, ice, and fire, you know? Or they just don't have ice, like, that's an option too. Wait up, what's the hurry? Why the rush? I'm not in a rush. I'm strolling through the forest, friend. Sammy. That, that was a that was a good net crack. I don't know if y'all heard that. Alright, let's switch over to Landon. Princess Weedle's level 9, and so am I. <clears throat> I currently play fight, Flight Rising, and holy cow, the elementals confuse me. Nature, the equivalent of grass, is strong against arcane, the equivalent of psychic for some reason. Huh. I guess that's trying to say, like, nature is better than magic? Because arcane to me feels like magic, you know, not just psychic. It's just, like, also, like, the magical power around us. But yeah, when I see, like, typing like that, my first instinct is also definitely Pokemon. And then if it goes against whatever you do in Pokemon, then I have to, like, kind of learn that about the game, you know? All elements are magic, though. Oh. Well, I don't know, then. I've never played that game. <laughs> Alright. How do, how do my mons look? Everybody looks pretty good. The one, because I think there's one more trainer. Oh no, that was the last trainer. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Let's save. Yes, I would like to save. Warning. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, I press no. Oh my god, gotta go through the text again. Yes. Okay, so we are actually going to backtrack, and now that I've gotten quite a few levels, we're going to go do the rival fight. Mm, let's see if we can get Moose one more level. 
from some wild encounters. I think we can have them all be level 9. Good job, Moose. Oh, here's what we can actually do. We can do some switch training on Ulu as we're walking back. I've used a lot of quick attacks. I can't believe that. <clears throat> yeah, to kind of learn a little bit more about Nuzlocking, I have watched like some things on YouTube as far as like Nuzlocke tips and stuff. And in the past, I've watched people's Nuzlocke playthroughs, um, which is how I learned about the Nuzlocke challenge to begin with. But um, as much as I've as I've watched that content, you know, a little bit here and there over the years, I still feel like I know so little <laughs> about what I need to know in regards to a Nuzlocke. Because I feel like all of them, like, freaking know um, if they can survive, if, they, if the other Pokemon crits or something like that, and I'm like, I freaking have no idea, I'm just guessing. use so many of my quick attacks. And I don't know if, I have to check if quick attack or tackle, which one is actually stronger. A quick attack is faster, obviously. It pretty much always goes first. But um, tackle might actually have more attack. I need to check. Yay. Both of them get levels. That's nice. Alright, I wanna just look at that. Power 40, power 35. Oh, so Quick Attack does have more power. So many encounters, I feel like. More so than I, I think I get normally. Or maybe I'm just like imagining it because I'm streaming. <laughs> And so it feels different when I'm getting these encounters. All right, let's switch to Moisty. I had to rope four teens and my father-in-law into pushing my car out of a berm. Oh no, Kendra, your car got snowed in? That's what you had to go shovel out? Oh my God, no wonder it took so long. I'm so sorry. Makes me so glad I don't live where it snows. Had to get on hands and knees and shovel the underside of the car. Oh my god. Well, I have an update for you. So so we've used all your names. So I'll show you the Pokemon. Um, we've got Ulu, the Weedle, Moose, the um, Rattata, Landon, the um, Bulbasaur, Moisty, the Pidgey. Um, Booty is our rival. And we had Potato Loaf Mankey, but um, I killed one already, and so he's dead, so I'm sorry. Um, we're not going to get to use Mankey in this playthrough. It's just, it is what it is. I was also shoveling the path to the house. Oh, well, that's kind of what I assumed you had left to do. I didn't realize you're like your car was stuck. I thought like, oh, she must just go be going to shovel because someone's coming over or something, you know? Um, but the car being stuck, that is really annoying. Junior, okay, we'll do one junior. It'll be next stream, but I'll save it. I'll save it in the queue, uh, Koneko. We're in the middle of a winter storm. Oh my god. The weather's been so crazy. It's been like so um windy and rainy. It's just like ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 
Um, I'm like amazed. Okay, we're gonna go try to do this rival fight. Okay, wish me luck, guys. Hopefully I don't kill another one. <laughs> yes, I don't have badges. By the way, did your Pokemon get any stronger? Well, let's find out. So he has a Pidgey that is level 9, and then his Charmander is level 9. And his Pidgey's gonna sand attack me to death. Come on. Oh, I was hoping for the two shot. Oh, at least he didn't sand attack again. There we go. Nice crit. Nice crit, Moose. Mm, yes, let's actually send out Moisty. I love that you two have a booty to cause problems in your life. It felt appropriate, you know, it felt appropriate to use booty for the rival name, um, considering what I inflicted you with uh, it, for, in that namesake, so. <laughs> uh, good, that scratch didn't do much. Nice, nice, nice. I'm not doing a huge amount more damage than him. And he is going first. Ah! Got a crit. Okay. Whew! Good job, guys. We did it. Oh, you just lucked out. No, that was pure strategy. That was pure strategy, Booty. I heard the Pokemon League is crawling with tough trainers. I have to figure out how to get past them. You should quit dawdling and get a move on. Don't worry, booty. I am moving my booty. Okay, let's heal. Oh, Kendra, I'll show you potato loaf. So we have a box called Death, where we're putting all of our deceased friends. So here he is, Potato Loaf the Mankey, in the box of Death. And that's where he will stay. Alright, so we gotta go back through Viridian to get to the next town. Oh, and I want to... I want to put Uwu in the front. Oh, I walked in the Pokemon Center and I forgot to freaking heal. <sighs> I'm silly. Noise sure enjoys my girl. <gasps> yep. That's for you, Mankey. That, that rest in peace is for you. Nurse Joy is the girl. I agree. And her sprite looks so cute in this game, too, with the little pink hair. It's adorable. Thank you, thank you for contributing to Finishing Doki Doki Literature Club. Don't forget, you guys, if you have points saved up, you can use them for that. And we will then, we will do the final act of that game once we get to that point. I love that all the nurse joys are canonically family according to the anime. As they should be. <laughs> all family that somehow looks identical. If that's not, you know, anime, what is? Absolutely nothing is the answer.
All right, for those wild encounters, um, we're gonna, as we're walking through here, we're gonna do a little bit of switch training with um, our Uwu Weedle so that he can try to get some levels, get caught up to everybody else, or as close as possible, anyway. Nice crit, Moose, nice crit. <laughs> Oh yeah, when we um when we get farther in this game, like get close to finishing it, we'll have to add a new Pokemon GIF to honor that. I'll have to we'll have to think about which Pokemon we want to have for the the GIF that honors finishing this game. I probably should have run. This is gonna take take a second, but oh well, whatever. We're getting experience. Bulbasaur, your starter. It's a good choice. It's a good choice, Kendra. I like it. Who's been the MVP, most valuable Pokemon on the team to that point? Yeah. Like whoever wins the most battles for you. I'm sure there will be a standout that will that will notice as we play through. There's got to be, right? There's got to be like a best Pokemon. The border graphics are really going for the fences this stream. Thank you, Kitty! Um, I, I wanted to do this game full screen like I had kind of switched to doing for uh, for Final Fantasy X, but the shape of the Game Boy Advanced screen just doesn't lend itself to that. It just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so, and then of course I wanted to have like the graphic for showing the team and everything there, and still show my camera and show the chat, etc, etc, and so it got pushed in the corner a little bit, so I had to find a pretty background that I thought matched with Pokemon Leaf Green. If I had chosen Fire Red, I probably would have like a volcano, but uh, we chose Leaf Green, so we have the leaves. <laughs> oh, wrong direction. We're going down. Down, down, down. Oh, and I think I didn't point it out verbally, but right across from that trainer is a hidden potion. We did pick it up, but I think I didn't I didn't say anything. I just did it. And this patch of grass, I'm pretty sure is the only patch of grass, like this last one right here, is the only patch of grass where you can find Pikachu, or maybe Pikachu is just like way higher there. I don't know, but when I've played through before, that's where I always find one. Have you noticed the skinny trees on the roadside? They can be cut down by a special Pokemon move, I hear. Good to know. Many Pokemon live only in forests and caves. You need to be persistent and look everywhere to get different kinds. Do you know the evolution cancel technique? When a Pokemon's evolving, you can stop the process. It's a technique for raising Pokemon the way they are. Yeah, I've literally never done that. I, I, does anybody do that? Cancel evolution? I've never, I never do that, <laughs> ever. So we've already caught Route 2 Pokemon. This is another patch of grass on Route 2, but we can't use this to catch because we already did that. And we are in Pewter City now. Let's talk to everybody. There aren't many serious Pokemon trainers here. They're all like bud catchers, you know, just hobbyists. But Pewter's Jim, but Pewter Jim's Brock isn't like that, not one bit. Good to know. Psst, do you know what I'm doing? No. I'm spraying Repel to keep wild Pokemon out of my garden. Ooh, good to know. I've done it because I wanted to mon a mon to learn a move that didn't learn when it evolved, but that's the only case. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And that does happen in a couple of spots, where that's the best way to get them to learn a move, or it makes them learn a move way faster, but then I always end up evolving them after that, you know? Pokemon learn new techniques as they grow, but some moves must be taught to them by people. A Pokemon becomes easier to catch if it has a status problem. Sleep, poison, burn, or paralysis, those are all effective. But catching Pokemon is never a sure thing. That's true. And eventually we will run into Pokemon, of course, that are much harder to catch. What? Team Rocket is at Mount Moon, huh? I'm on the phone. Scram. Okay. 
I really want a Pikachu, so I'm trading my Clefairy for one. I'm trading Pokemon with that kid there. I had two Pikachu, so I figure I might as well trade one. Hi, glad to meet you. That's unfriendly of you. How about saying hi back? So come on, tell me about yourself. I'd love to hear your profile. Tell me something about yourself. What's your profile? Okay, we can do it. You guys help me pick. Um, this is actually something that you use with the online features of this game, which we're not going to access, but um, you know, maybe it'll be fun. Maybe it'll be fun. So we'll, we'll do a profile. So basically you get um, all of these different words that you can put in. Uh, so like anticipation, awesome, break, drooling, fiery, um, hopeless. All of these three things. So we can say maybe, um, let's see, ticklish, trainer. You can get the different kinds of things for trainer. Hello, all wonderful people. Okay. Um, yes, I think those are all words that are in here. Let's see, greetings. Is that one that, you, is that your go-to, Koneko? Hello, all wonderful people. Hello. Maybe all is under miscellaneous? Oh, where would all be? Adjectives? It's not really an adjective. Time? It's not a hobby. Actions? Feelings. Oh, I didn't mean to press it twice. There's all. It was my tagline on DeviantArt before I got my current one. Oh, that's nice. Uh, okay, I think wonderful would be under adjectives. Um, maybe we, I wonder if we can't do wonderful. Maybe we'll say hello all hungry people. Because I'm hungry all the time. Does this actually have people? It doesn't, it has person. We're gonna say friend then. There we go. Hello, all hungry friend. That's close enough. <laughs> I had a lot of different taglines, but hello, all wonderful people, and possibly of moose, and it's not a spoiler if there's no context. Um, I am definitely, I, I'm not anti-spoiler. I, I think spoilers are okay. And I don't think they ruin things, you know. If the in, way you get enjoyment out of it is purely from the twist, then your writing was not good enough. Sorry, that's my opinion. Your profile really says something about who you are. Now that I know you better, it makes us better friends than ever. Oh, fabulous. So we're not gonna, this upstairs, this little escalator, I'm not gonna go up there because that's also more like online stuff that, um, that we're not gonna do and we can't do anyway. Yawn. When Jigglypuff sings, Pokemon get drowsy. Me too. That's my snore noise. Is everybody snoozing a little bit now? <laughs> All right, have I healed my Pokemons? Nope, let's heal everybody. Welcome to our Pokemon Center, yes. Spoilers like, oh, character does an awesome thing, but I don't like hearing exactly what awesome thing the character does. I want to find out for myself. I understand. I mean, there's definitely a lot of people that don't want spoilers. I just, the times that I have been spoiled, it's not actually spoiled my enjoyment. So I've kind of become of the opinion that's like, spoilers really don't matter. Good things can happen if you raise Pokemon diligently. Even the weak ones can surprise you if you don't give up on them. A shady old guy sucked me into buying this weird fish Pokemon. It's totally weak and it costs 500 Poke Dollars. Oh no. <laughs> Hi there, how may I help you? We definitely need to buy some more balls, because you can never have enough balls, and we're going to have to use our balls in a later area. Yeah, we'll buy some. How many potions do I have? Oh, that just spent all my money. That's okay. 
Sure. <clears throat> what do you have to say, sir? Did you check out the museum? No, we've not checked out the museum. Really, you absolutely have to go. Let's go, guys. Let's go to the museum. Yeah, same here. I haven't intentionally spoiled things for myself because I wanted to do the scene without knowing what happens. Why my spelling died? It's okay, I still figured out what you meant. This is it, the museum. You have to pay to get in, but it's worth it. See you around. Okay, so next to the museum up here, I think it's in one of these flowers. No, it's in this area. Yeah, you get a Pokeball. I can't remember how much it is to get into the museum, so hopefully I can still get in. Yes, it's 50 polka dollars. Okay, would you like to come in? Yes! We would love to tour the museum. As you guys can see, I play these games like RPGs. I like to explore and talk to everybody. Um, I think that's part of the fun. Aerodactyl Fossil, a primitive and rare Pokemon. Oh. It, I should be grateful for my long life. Never did I think I would get to see the bones of a dragon. Is Aerodactyl a dragon? Kabutops Fossil, a primitive and rare Pokemon. I want a Pikachu. It's so cute. I asked my daddy to catch me one. Yeah, a Pikachu soon. I promise. Space Shuttle. This month we're running a space exhibit. Okay. Very cool. Moonstone, huh? What's so special about it? Looks like an ordinary rock to me. A meteorite that fell on Mount Moon. It's thought to be a moonstone. July 20th, 1986. Humankind first set foot on the moon that day. I brought a color TV just so I could watch the news. I think that's funny in the Pokemon world that like the moon landing happening on that date is totally canon. Um, just like the real world. So you can see there's more guys behind the counter, but we can't actually get back there yet. We'll have to go there later. Let's see who else we can talk to. Aerodactyl is rock flying, but I assume it used to be dragon flying when it wasn't a fossil. Oh, maybe, because um, all the fossil types, of course, get rock, but that doesn't necessarily mean that was their typing before they were revived fossils. Nidoran, sit. <laughs> I love the Nidoran noise. Our Pokemon's an outsider, so it's finicky and hard to battle. An outsider is a Pokemon that you get in a trade. It grows fast, but it may ignore an unskilled trainer in battle. If only we had some badges. If only. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that, Koneko, because why else would, like, basically all the fossils have that typing? That doesn't make any sense. You're a trainer, right? Brock's looking for new challengers. Follow me. So basically, you can't get past this guy until you go and beat Brock. Yeah, I love Nidorans. I think they're so cute. And they get the they get the double kick move and their poison type. I don't know, they're just nice. Good Pokemons. If you have the right stuff, go take on Brock. Clefairy came from the moon. That's what the rumor is. They appear after moonstones fell on Mount Moon. Does he have any grass moves outside of Leech Seed yet? I'm debating if I should end the stream and do some levels off stream and go fight Brock as the beginning of the next stream. Let me see, but I want to see what um, moves he gets. Okay, so he gets Vine Whip very next level, so I definitely want to level him up before I go fight Brock. And he's, he's severely underleveled for Brock right now, and Leech Seed is just probably not enough to do it. So I definitely want to have Vine Whip for that. I always think it's weird that only the baby Nidos can breed with each other. That is super weird. That is super weird, Koneko. And I've heard a bunch of like fun theories on like why that is, um, but, uh, but it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. All right, let's organize my moves here. Okay, that's all good. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna save. 
off stream, I am going to um, get everybody leveled up so that we are prepared for Brock. And for our next episode of Artistic License, we'll be starting with fighting Brock. And we'll go from there. Um, let's go back to there. And we can close the game. Bye, Pokemon. Okay. Um, while I'm kind of clicking around for to find somebody to raid, I want to explain also for Inner Stage Window, you know, typically we would have our media episode at the beginning of the month, and we had planned to do Harry Potter, but we're actually going to push that back a week um, because, like, like I said, like a, a lot of my friends have COVID. Guess what? Landon's one of them. Now, she's probably going to be fine by Saturday, but just to kind of give her a break, we decided we're pushing the Harry Potter and the... Um, goblet of fire back one week and uh and so we're just going to play our sims 2 legacy like we like we like to do whenever landon is busy for um the interstage window stream on saturday so we'll be doing a sims 2 stream it's been a while since we did a sims 2 stream so that'll be fun okay you know you know i kind of want to raid somebody new tonight let me i want to see who else is doing a Pokemon stream, if there's anybody good doing a Pokemon stream. If I could spell. <laughs> Here we go. Let's look at the Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green category. See if there's anybody else doing Nuzlocks. Yes, there is somebody else doing a first ever Pokemon Nuzlocke. Let me see about this person. Oh, the ad, of course. I got to add, so we got to wait for that. So, um, recap of my first ever Nuzlocke so far. I already, I already lost my first Pokemon. I kind of can't believe it, um, but I also kind of can because I know that Nuzlocke's are not the easiest. Oh, and they're very, they're in the very beginning of their Nuzlocke as well. Let me make sure this person. Okay, they do speak English. I've I just didn't want to accidentally raid a, somebody then that, that most of my audience wouldn't be able to understand. So yeah, there we go. They're doing it. They are right now, it looks like in the very beginning area of the game, similar to what we were. So yeah, name is Pancake Perkins. Let's raid into them. Okay, while that's counting down, um, I will see you guys for Inner Stage Window on Saturday, and I will see you guys next week for more leaf green nuzlocke. Maybe I can get through a stream without killing anybody. We'll find out. <laughs> um, and as always, of course, um, you can find me in all of the places. Here's all my socials. You guys know how that works. You know how to do. Um, all other things are down in the about. You can find like my wish list and tip jar and all that fun, cool stuff if you want to do all that. And um, as always, do not forget to make it a great day.